So, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, first of all, I would like to thank organizers for kind invitation to this uh, excellent conference. We are very glad to be here and to have an opportunity to share the knowledge and experience in the area of criminal law and policy. In our presentation, we would like uh, to provide a brief uh, review of development of uh, the Czech criminal law and uh, policy since the beginning of 90s to these days. As to the uh, criminal law, uh, we can say that after the so-called Velvet Revolution in 1989, the reform of this branch of law started. Uh, this reform was based on some general principles, or maybe better to say on ideas, called 4D, democratization, the ideologization, the criminalization, and the penalization. Uh, these were ideas. Uh, the reality seems to be a little bit different, namely in relation to last two days, the, uh, the criminalization and the penalization. However, we can distinguish two phases of the reform. The first one, there was a phase of the amendments, and the second, the phase of recodification. As to the first phase, we can say that numerous amendments to the Criminal Code and Code of Criminal Procedure has been accepted since the beginning of the 90s, reflecting the changes in the society, both social, economic, political. So it was necessary to reflect it also in the legislation and in criminal law. Uh, if I should uh, mention the most important changes, uh, I would like to emphasize the idea of the prison sentence as ultima ratio and the tendency of alternative punishment and alter alternative solutions in criminal matters. Of course, it was also necessary to abolish the many criminal offenses uh, connected uh, with the previous political regime, such as dishonoring of social state, uh, dishonoring of president of republic, leaving the country, or extended protection, protection of uh, so-called socialistic property. On the other hand, it was necessary to introduce new criminal offenses reflecting uh, changes in society, namely in the area of economic crimes, property crimes, uh, uh, crimes against environment, and so on. As to the second phase of the uh, reform, the phase of recodification, now I would like to focus uh, on uh, criminal law substantive uh, and on the concept of three laws which uh, have been prepared during the 90s. Uh, the first, uh, uh, there is an act uh, of, uh, on uh, juvenile justice uh, which is effective since 1st of uh, January 2004. Uh, juveniles are people between 15 and 18 uh, years of age, and this act gives coherent legal regulation of criminal liability of punishment of juveniles together with the legal regulation of criminal proceedings in cases of juveniles. But it is related also to the matter of minors, that mean children under 15. They are not criminalizable, but if they commit an act otherwise classified as criminal, some protective measures and also some educational measures can be imposed on them in special proceedings by court for juvenile. The second uh, was the new criminal court. The process of adoption of the new criminal code was quite complicated. The bill from 2005 was accepted by Chamber of Deputies of the Parliament of the Czech Republic in 2006. But finally, after the whole legislative process, this bill was refused. Uh, during the next two years, uh, the new bill of the criminal code was prepared and it was accepted uh, by Parliament of the Czech Republic in February 2009 and is effective since 1st of January 2010. So now we have a 22nd anniversary <laughs> from adoption of, of this uh, criminal code. I must say as amended because during the last 25 years many, many amended uh, has been accepted by Parliament. 
Uh, and the last but not least, there is uh, the Act on Criminal Liability of Legal Entities, Legal Persons, which is effective since the 1st of January 2012. To these issues, just a short remark. Uh, we can say that uh, introduction of corporate criminal liability is a significant change in the existing theoretical concept of criminal liability, namely uh, in relation to basic principles uh, such as uh, uh, principle of individual criminal liability of national persons, uh, principle of liability for a guilt, principle of personality of punishments. So, uh, in my view, this kind of criminal liability uh, has brought a new dimension to the criminal law. Now I would like to present the most significant changes to the criminal code of uh, 2009. Um, explain the definition of some basic principles of criminal law. In this connection, I would like to emphasize the principle of subsidiarity of criminal repression, which is very important on three levels. On the levels of legislation, that means criminal law as an ultima ratio, but of course on the level of interpretation of criminal law norms and also on the level of application. The second important change is uh, the introduction of formal <laughs> concept of a criminal act contrary to previous formal material concept. But we have no clear, clear formal concept uh, because it's connected with the material corrective of the principle of subsidiarity of criminal repression. So finally, is a similar like in previous legal regulation. Uh, it's necessary also to mention the binary categorization of criminal offenses into crime and minor offenses which should lead to differentiation in punishment and uh, which also could create uh, the space for various types of criminal proceedings, for example, diversions or pre-bargaining. Uh, it's also necessary to mention emphasizing the philosophy of the imprisonment uh, as an ultima ratio and the idea of alternative punishment extension of the system of alternative punishments. Uh, for example, we have house arrest, prohibition to entry uh, to sport, culture, and other social events, and so on. But on the other hand, there is also uh, the tendency to, of stricter punishment in some cases of uh, most serious crimes. For example, the maximum term of imprisonment as a regular sentence was increased from 15 to 20 years and also the principle of aggravation in cases of pluralistic uh, criminal activity such as concurrence or recidivism was extended as well. The last thing I would like to accent is the new systematic arrangement of the special part of criminal code. So that priority is given to the protection of fundamental human rights and freedoms of individual over to collective interest and society and the state. So, I'm finishing now, and the floor is ready for my colleague, and we will continue our presentation. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I will continue with the Criminal Procedure Code, and I again go back to the early 90s. There was the first idea to make a recodification of the Criminal Code and Criminal Procedure Code together just to come effect in the same time. But unfortunately, it's failed. As my colleague mentioned, we, our criminal code was adopted in 2009, but we still have a criminal procedural code adopted in 1961. Came to effect in 1962, I just today understood that we didn't have any conference celebrating the 60th anniversary of, the, of this criminal procedure code. But um, now the main goal of the Ministry of Justice is to make a new recodification or new codex of criminal procedure code. It's like a target. Uh, that's why there was a prepared a special commission uh, under the supervision of the Ministry of Justice 
uh, consisting of judges, state prosecutors, attorneys, member of Ministry of uh, Interior, Minister of Justice, academic staff to prepare this new criminal code. This commission was working, I mean, I have to just tell you, I'm talking about the last commission for the recodification, was uh, working for almost 80 years just to prepare the new codex of a criminal procedure code, but we have to count the three years of this strange COVID time, which, which all activity was interrupted. In that time, this proposal is currently under comment procedure, but the just philosophical question is how long will be this comment procedure and how long take the legislative process in our parliament to adopt the new criminal procedure code. For the Ministry of Justice, it's a priority right now, but who knows? Uh, when I mentioned that our current code of the criminal procedure was adopted in 1961, of course you can imagine it was adopted under the, if I can say, the supervision of uh, some legal advisors from Soviet Union. But it's necessary to tell you that in that time, compared to other socialist countries, it was one of the modern criminal procedure code in the Eastern Europe. If I speak about the most significant changes of the criminal procedure code, every amendment has the same goal. Just make criminal procedure quick, fast, make evidence easy. I have to be just very honest. It's one of the reasons why we are quite often losing cases in the Strasbourg. We don't have a problem with the fire trial but for the lacks of this uh, criminal procedure. Sometimes it's incredible, incredible long. Okay, we just wanted to make some acceleration of criminal proceeding. We have a shorted preparatory proceeding. We have a, a trial proceeding before a single judge. We have a limits, time limits for the lacks of the pre-trial proceedings, but we don't have any limits for the trial in front of the court. That's why preparatory proceeding can be really very quick, but the trial in front of the court can be, can be three points. Uh, the other amendments just wanted to shifting the burden of the proof to the main trial to make the preliminary proceeding as a supporting part of the criminal procedure. I think we can say, maybe it's in your country, I mean, talking about the Hungary, it's the same. The first time you just make an interview with the police officer. Afterwards, you are going to the court. And it's, sometimes it's repeating many times. And as, a, for example, witness, you are totally, just to be polite, exhausted and uh, your ability to remember is just going down and down and down. Uh, of, course, uh, of course, another amendment uh, are shortening the rights of the victim and injured party, because from the early 90s, we just care about accused, we just care about defense, and unfortunately, we forgot that there is some victim. That's why we just want to make the rights higher. That's why, uh, for example, we have the institute called the confidentiality of identity of the witness. If the witness is afraid just to speak in the case. Uh, if I will, if I will, uh, if I will, uh, uh, if I will uh, continue, uh, criminal substantive and criminal procedure law is not only included in criminal code, uh, juvenile act and uh, criminal liability for uh, legal entities, but in a lot of other special acts. There is for you at least the list of these acts. 
I would like to mention uh, the act of uh, international judicial cooperation in criminal matters because until 2013, this part was part of a criminal procedure code. But inter internationalism of crime, organized crime, and there is still more and more institutes. That's why we just needed to specific, uh, specific code. I would like to give you some just brief information about the prison system because it's, it can be quite interesting for, to you, for you. The prison system in the Czech Republic is the system of the state institutions. We don't have any, uh, any prisons built by, uh, built by a private sector or the private sources participating, participating to build a prison. Of course, it's a very interesting question because the state budget, especially in this situation, doesn't have a money for the new prisons. For example, there was only one new prison built in the Czech Republic in the last 30 years. If the public sector will be participating, it can be a really good opportunity just to make a more prisons. Uh, if the court uh, imposing a sentence of imprisonment, court sh uh, shall currently specify the type of the prison in which the sentence will be served. We have two types of the, pr two or actually three types of the prison. Guarded prison, high security prisons, and special prisons for juveniles. I don't want to speak about the prisons <clears throat> for juveniles, but I would like to tell you the differences between guarded prison and the high security prison, because you may ask, what are the differences between these two types of the prisons? The differences are quite easy. Let's talk about the internal and external security. Can I move inside of the prison with or without limitation? Can I, uh, can I uh, go outside of the prison after my work with or without some guarded uh, service? If I have a chance to work, has to be my working place allocated inside of the prison or outside of the prison? It's a the, it's the very important question and talking about the, uh, the, guarded, um, the guarded prison, uh, there are three levels of the guarded prison, with the low level, medium level, and the high level. And as I mentioned, that uh, if you will uh, serve your sentence in the guarded prison or a high security prison, it's the question of the court. This, uh, this um, decision is made by the director of the prison. It means, again, the question of the external and internal risk of uh, the prisoner. Very interesting, what I would like to tell you, it's a, we have a, in Czech Republic, so-called open prison. Maybe you have heard of this term. We have only one open prison in our country. It was uh, opened in 2000. Uh, 17, and the main goal why we opened this prison is uh, to reduce the recidivism, recidivism in the Czech Republic. Unfortunately, we have still at least 65% of recidivists. And uh, during this uh, past five years, around 200 prisoners have passed through the open prison and the recidivism is only about 10-11%, which is really not so high. And if you have never heard about the open prison, the prisoners have just a daily routine, like the same things you are doing being at home. Cooking, washing your clothes, uh, gardening, and doing just ordinary activity, keeping animals, and the open prison in the Czech Republic, they have a special training uh, guide dog center, which is uh, very, uh, very necessary. Just to make 
quite brief conclusion uh, about, about uh, this part. The criminal law is still developing, even if we are talking about the criminal code or criminal substantive law or criminal procedure law, it's still developing and the criminal law has to be able to reflect the, the modern trends, the modern problems what we right now have. And uh, just going back to the criminal procedure code, one of the key current objective of the criminal policy is to make, finally to make, not make, we made it, to adopt a new criminal procedure code. It was my pleasure to share with you the information about the criminal <coughs> procedure code, and it was, of course, pleasure of my colleague to share the general information in, about the criminal law in the Czech Republic. Of course, if you have sometimes during the afternoon any kind of questions, we are just ready to answer you. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.